Do you wish to see this message? Then join me on another proper repair adventure where I shall retrofit the tire pressure monitoring system on a 5 series BMW. At the time, BMW used two systems for tire pressure monitoring. RDC used the sensors in each wheel and was used by early E46 and non M5 E39. DWS, also called RPA, measures the rotational speed of each wheel and was used in the last year of E46, E39 M5 and E38. XYZ series, I don't know. DWS seems like an easier and a cheaper option, but will it work on a non M5 E39? I actually went for the third option, kinda. This is a DWS module, but from a MIDI R50. For some reason it was half the price than the ones for BMW, but it's practically the same. First, we need to understand how the system works. The ABS module receives the speed values from each wheel sensor and then fits this information via four output signals to other modules that require it. The front right wheel speed is needed by the automatic transmission, beam throw control and the navigational system. If you don't have any of those, then there is a good chance that you also don't have the X1184 comp connector and would therefore need to get the signal straight from the ABS module. Similar is for the front left, the signal is used by Navi and electronic damper control and is available at the connector X1183. The X1101 connector for the rear left signal is the one you can count on, since every car has a general module and an instrument cluster. The rear right signal is the one that goes straight to the engine computer, unless you have an M5, then it should be available at the X10452 connector. All four speed signals must reach the DWS module. Other connections are almost trivial. We have power, ground, cables network and connection to the switch to initialize the learning procedure. The switch itself has one more wire for the light inside of it. We'll be working on some power wires, so let's disconnect the battery first. Now we need to get to the fuse box, which requires removal of the glove compartment. There are quite a few steps, not very difficult, but you should save all the screws and nuts in an organized manner. Start with the bottom ones, then open the glove box and remove the strap on each side and the flashlight connector. Behind it there are more screws and retainers, and each of them is different. Then we have to separate the fuse panel by first disconnecting the light switch and then unhooking the panel. To do that you push on two tabs here and here and then just kind of pull it out. Originally the system fits from fuses 20 and 24 but those are shared with some other systems. So instead I will rather gather power from the slot 19 which is free to use. It also already has power on the fit side, so we don't need to worry about that. We have to remove the lock bar, insert a pinned wire with the appropriate connector and put the lock bar back in. First I'm gonna connect the power, ground and the cable wire to see if we can communicate with the module. Power wire is the one we just installed in the fuse box. To get the other two we need to reach behind the glove box again. The wires for the general module are a bit in the way, but once we put those aside, we can see the comp connectors. The one for the K-Bus network will have the white, red, yellow wires attached to it. There should be space left to connect our wire to it. If inserting proves difficult, the comp can also be opened for easier access. The bucket of brown wires will be the ground. So once the power, ground and communication wires are connected, let's plug in the module. Put in the fuse and reconnect the battery. I've connected my scan tool now and let's see if we can communicate with the module. And we do! Amazing! And a quick data check also looks good. I will now focus on the initialization switch. We need to remove this trim piece and then run three wires to the other side. After pulling out the on-off knob, take a 2mm Allen key to remove the radio and disconnect it. For the tape slash CD player, take a 2.5mm Allen key and undo the two screws hidden in there. The unit should now slide out. The wire for the light connects into one of the comps. Search for the one with the light blue red stripped wires. They should be hot with the marker lights switched on. So that is our wire for the light, 
and I've connected the other two to the appropriate pins of the connector. Now we just need to pass all three to the other side. Wires on this side also need to be pinned to a connector, which is available at the dealer, but the pinned wires I bought on eBay. Use your favorite method on combining the wires, insert them into the connector, and connect the switch. Now let's test the light, that works, and the switch itself. The system should start initialization after holding it for about 7 seconds. It's good to wrap the wires a bit, and then we can put everything back together. Now it's time for the difficult part, which is getting the speed signals. For easier access to those comp connectors, I should drop the entire bracket. There are two plastic nuts on the top, one is here in the middle, and another one above on the left side. Both are third millimeter. Once removed, we can swivel the bracket somewhat lower and see all the comp connectors. The trick is now to find the right ones. Brown wire with the right stripe should be the rear left signal coming from the pin 34 on our ABS module. That is top row 8 from the right. So when checking with multimeter there is indeed continuity. For the front right signal search for the yellow wires with the white stripe. The signal wire for the rear right wheel speed can be accessed at the engine computer which resides in here, connector X6004 pin 22 but I've decided to just make a splice at the ABS connector and run an extra wire from there. This, however, does require a skill of removing and reinserting the pins in a connector. Passing the cables into the PCM box takes a bit of patience. An old hood cable wire is of great assistance when it comes to tugging the wires for this loom. Now they need to go inside the cabin, which is through there. For the second loom I had no patience, I just ran the wires next to the rubber grommet. We're nearly there, just match those last two signal wires with the connector. Since this is a model for a Mini, it needs a slight modification in order to fit in the BMW. After that it fits nicely in its place above the general module. Upon plugging in the connector, it's time to reassemble everything back together. I will now code the option to the car. I'm not sure if this is strictly necessary for the system to work, but I do believe you will not receive a notification in case of a failure. Using the BMW scanner, let's go to the ACM module and select coding data. Click on the light coding and then tick the box for the RDC. Hit write, confirm, and now you can exit the program. I've connected once again with the scan tool and reset the initialization. One may accidentally press the button, but BMW engineers decided that 7 seconds was the safe limit before the system resets and gives us the notification on the instrument cluster. Now just make sure your tire pressure is good and simply drive the car to complete the learning procedure. There is no way of telling when the learning has completed without using some sort of scan tool, but it has taken me about 100 kilometers. I do believe, however, that not all the speech ranges need to be completed. But since I live in Germany, we might as well do them all.
After about 20 liters of gasoline, learning has completed and it's time to put the system to the test. I will drop the pressure on one tire and let's see if the system will detect the difference. That was actually pretty quick. We do have a notification. And now I just need to do the learning procedure once again.